praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. I pray that you have a good afternoon and have hopefully got some rest. If that's your normal routine, I highly encourage it. <laughs> and um, But we've come back in the house of the Lord tonight uh, to worship Him. Would you stand with me? Did you enjoy the Word of God this morning? My goodness, it, uh, it was a word that has stirred my heart. And uh, I pray that it has for you as well. As we begin tonight, I'd like to take you to the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, I want to begin reading in verse 34. This is after the Lord has already been dealing with uh, Peter about how he was going to uh, reach out and save the Gentiles, just as he did had the Jews up until this point, those that were recorded anyway, those only ones that had come to Christ were part of the church, were Jewish at this point, but Peter has the vision about the clean and the unclean, and right after that, a messenger comes to get him to come to a man's house by the name of Cornelius. Verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptisms which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all these things, all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after, after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that, is, that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, and as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did he know that the Holy Ghost, they had received the gift of the Holy Ghost? Verse 46 says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. He then goes back, gives a report of, of that meeting, what had happened. And he told his brethren there, he said, they received the Holy Ghost as we did in the beginning. I'm thankful that it didn't stop there, that even now today, Jews and Gentiles, all every people of every nation who would come to the Lord are candidates, those who have been born again, sanctified by the blood, have become a candidate to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're here tonight and you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I would encourage you to get in and let God pour out His Spirit upon us. I pray that I will be rebaptized in the Spirit today, tonight. You say, Pastor, why would you need that? Amen. I just needed it filled up all over again, again and again and again, because a lamp is lit and it burns and that oil begins to burn and you just need a continual refilling from time to time. And I believe that's what we need uh, this week. And I'm excited about that. Would you go to the Lord in prayer? Would you just ask him, I don't know what God wants to do tonight and will do. But I know there's nothing that he cannot do, and uh, I want to invite him in this place today. Let's do that. Lord, thank you for your blessings upon our lives. God, we just cannot thank you enough. 
cannot praise you enough for all that you have done. Lord, it's good to be in your house on a Sunday night. Thank you, Lord God, for our evangelists. And Lord, I pray that you would just continue to touch him. Lord, I pray that you would burden his heart to preach like a man from another world. And Lord, I pray that you would have your way. Have your way in this place as we sing, as we worship, as we praise the name of the Lord. Lord, it's an invitation, God, that you would fill this house with your glory. Lord God, that you would move in such a mighty and wonderful way that every man, woman, boy, and girl would be here as your word declared. God, all of them that heard your word were filled with the Holy Ghost. Let it be tonight that every person that would hear the word, that we would leave here whole tonight, that we would leave here full tonight, ready, Lord, to be consumed, ready, Lord God, to move forward. God, in your name we pray, God, in Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. When I come into his presence, I humble myself, I lift up both my hands, and I begin. Worship Him. I worship Him when I come into His presence. I humble myself. I lift up both my hands and I begin. Worship Him. I worship Him. Victories he's won. I'll 
Just lift your hands with me tonight. Would you just lift your heart up with your hands tonight and just praise him for a moment. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we glorify you in this house, Lord. We glorify you in this sanctuary. We praise you. We love you. We honor you, Lord God, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Oh, the presence of the Lord is so wonderful. Amen. We thank the Lord for his presence here tonight. I'm so glad that you've made it out and come to be with us back again tonight to worship the Lord. And we're going to continue to worship him. The ushers will come and help me serve the congregation. We want to give his giving unto the Lord tonight and all through this week the the offerings uh, this morning and through this week we want to take very very good care of our evangelist amen we will present him with an offering um, when when it's whenever that time is to for him to depart and um, but we want to take very very good care of him be praying about what you would like to give for the whole week I challenge you to give your very best I've got a number that I want to be the minimum of that, but at whatever comes in beyond that, he'll definitely receive. And, uh, but let's take care of him. Uh, when you're giving um, into a ministry such as this, it's a good investment. Amen. I wouldn't bring someone here that wasn't, and, uh, but we want to invest in their ministry. They're on the road full time, and uh, we want to take care of them so they depend upon, you know how it is, they depend upon offerings to go on and so you know how much it takes to run your household and uh, so let's do our best if every family will do their best I know that uh, their needs will be met as well because God is going to take care of them also amen but let's give tonight just because we love the Lord Heavenly Father thank you you have blessed us Lord in so many ways we we can't count them all and Lord we don't give to try to pay you back Lord we could never do that Lord we there's not enough money in the whole world to repay you for what you have done in our hearts and lives. We can never praise you enough for, for just bringing salvation to our heart and soul, let alone all other spiritual blessings and, and uh, how you've taken care of us and on and on. Lord, we just, we're so thankful. Lord, I pray that you'll bless every gift and every giver tonight. 
Lord, that each one would give all that they're able to give. And for doing it, Lord, to honor you and to, and to bless you as we give to this man and woman of God. Lord, that every need would be met through this week. Lord God, we praise you. We thank you for it. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give us giving unto the Lord tonight. God bless you for your giving tonight. Sister Debbie's going to come around and worship the Lord with a song tonight. Uh, would you worship right along with her as she sings for Jesus? And as she's coming, uh, let me just say another word of encouragement. Uh, throughout the week, Monday through Friday, we'll have church beginning at 7. Each night before, the, the church will be open at by 6 o'clock. So if you're able and willing to come out and pray uh, beforehand I think that would be a blessing to the meeting and uh, but uh, we're looking forward to a great week worship with sister Debbie as she sings Without getting slack, we'll go forward if we'll just go back. We'll know a tree by the fruit we see. And serving God has no in between. You're either cold or you're hot. He said the swarm they'll have no part. going back to lost and found going back I'm gonna stand my ground we've got
Praise the Lord. Amen. That's one of those songs with a sermon in the middle of it, isn't it? So you already got another sermon tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Well, we're going to just give it right over to our evangelists tonight and let them just take their liberty in the Lord. So would you welcome Brother Adam Fulgham back as they're coming to, to uh, just lead us however he desires to do it tonight. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I've enjoyed the singing, and I believe the Lord's been glorified already here tonight through what we've done. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in the remainder of this service tonight. It is so good to have you in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming back. I know a lot of people probably would have come back in their churches, but they got comfortable at home and sat in that lazy boy or the easy chair, whatever you want to call it, and they stayed there got planted just like a seed, and they didn't want to get up. But I thank you for getting up and making your way back to the house of the Lord tonight, and we're so glad to have you. How many enjoyed this morning's service? Amen. Amen. I was blessed, and I pray that you were as well. It's so good to be here with you this week. We appreciate the pastor and his family for inviting us. We're just so glad that we can spend this time with you. Thank you also for the accommodations. I was telling Kaylee this afternoon, that's as nice of a hotel room as I can remember, at least in the uh, not-too-distant past. I can tell you it's been a nice place to stay, and we appreciate that so very much. And I appreciate your pastor. How many love your new pastor family you have here? I guess I can still say you're new. But uh, we're so grateful for them for inviting us. Uh, my wife is going to help me sing tomorrow night, so that will give you incentive to come back. <clears throat> say amen. That will give you incentive to want to come back tomorrow night. Uh, she's been traveling with me a good bit here recently. and I'm trusting she'll be strong and ready to go by tomorrow night. So you come back and be with us in the house of the Lord. Until then, you're stuck with me. So you worship God with me tonight. Can I have just a few musicians to come back? I'm not going to sing anything you don't know. Let's just worship the Lord together if that's all right with you. We're here to lift up Jesus. and Let's worship Him tonight. Glad to know that Jesus is living on the inside. It makes all the difference in the world when you know Him. When you know His power, when you know His touch, it makes all the difference in the world. And we're on our way to a place that's being prepared for us. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Worship the Lord with me tonight. As I sing this old song. If you know it, you sing it right along with me tonight. Oh, my way gets brighter, my load gets lighter, walking up the king's highway. There's 
this song as well and I know you'll know this you sing right along with me though others would be lonely when all their friends are gone my Lord is ever standing by my side there is a heavy load upon me and yet I'm pressing on because I found a savior, friend, and guide. Oh, yes, I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. Oh, yes, I have somebody with me to share the heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Although trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. In bitter toil and sorrow and heartaches not a few, a consolation sweet is mine each day. Oh, I'm going home tomorrow when life on earth is through, I have somebody with me all the way. Oh, yes, I have somebody with me to share the heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. Put your hands together.
Some folks have lots of pity. They say I'm sad and lone, but I don't need their sympathy at all. For in that golden city, my Lord's prepared a home. I'm leaving when I hear that final call. Oh, yes, I have somebody with me to share the heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. Oh, yes, I have somebody with me to share the heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. Oh, I have somebody with me all the way. Just remain standing. We're going to sing one more song together, and we'll get into God's Word. This song, I believe, encapsulates what revival is all about. It's a prayer to God. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Is that your prayer tonight? By the end of this week, on Friday night, Saturday morning, I want to be closer to God than I am on Sunday night. I want to know Him more. I want to be more like Him by Saturday than I am today. Can we believe for that tonight? Let's pray to God in song. Let's talk to Him in song. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me bleeding side oh draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord bleeding side one more time oh draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord Precious bleeding sigh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles tonight, I invite you to turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah 33, and we'll begin at verse 1 tonight. As soon as you arrive and look at it, you'll recognize what's being said here in this passage of Scripture. But last night as I was praying, the Lord always gives the message in time, I do believe. Sometimes He does it in different ways. I was standing before that congregation in Lumberton last week, and I told them, how the Lord had given me that message for Wednesday night, just Wednesday morning. I woke up with a strange verse of Scripture on my mind, and I didn't know what to do with it. But as the day progressed and went on, I felt the Lord was laying it on my heart to preach it. So I did the best I could to put something together and preach Wednesday night, and the Lord helped us. But it's a different way most of the time the Lord gets His message through. But I was praying last night in the hotel room and asking the Lord, for his direction this week and for this uh, particular day today, Sunday, both services, I was asking him for his help. And it was just like he gave both of these messages to me. And I tried to move beyond this one and move to something else. But I felt like this would be the mind of the Lord for this service tonight. And I always want to do my best to be obedient to God because I have a lot of messages with me. 
I know some evangelists, they may only take five or six when they go to a church and just preach those. But most of the time, when I go somewhere, I bring everything I've got. Just about every message I have is with me here in Florida tonight. But I just try to trust the Lord with whatever he has to say. And I felt this to be his mind tonight. So I want to try to be obedient to him. Jeremiah 33 and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Now I want to read to you from a very familiar portion in James chapter 5. James chapter 5 and verse 16. Matter of fact, we'll go back to verse 13. James chapter 5 and verse 13. He writes and says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. There is an overarching theme in both of these passages of Scripture, and that's what I want to share to you tonight. It is the theme of prayer, calling on the name of the Lord. And I'll say at the very outset tonight, I'm probably not going to say one thing behind this pulpit that you've not heard before, but I simply want to talk to you tonight for the next little while on a call to prayer. A call to prayer. If there's ever been a day and an hour that we must call on the name of the Lord, it is this day. We need to pray. Let's, let's pray right now and ask the Lord to touch us and to help us to deliver his word tonight. Father, I come before you this evening in the name of Jesus. I realize that without you I am nothing. That without you I can do nothing. So Lord, I'm calling on your name. I'm asking you, Jesus, that you would give me the strength that I need. Give me that fresh touch, that fresh anointing from heaven to deliver the word of God to this people. Lord, I ask that you would make the preaching of your word easy. Make it effective in the hearts and the lives of those that are going to hear. I pray most of all that you would encourage us, that you would direct us to pray, to call on the name of the Lord. Lord, we need you tonight. I stand in desperate need of the anointing. I ask you to feed me as I stand in this pulpit. Speak through me to this congregation. Let the anointing flow out from this pulpit. Pit. Let a fresh anointing fall upon the congregation to hear, to receive, to pray, to respond to the word of God. I ask, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way as only you're able to move. As we call on your name, as we believe you, as we believe you for great and mighty things, Lord, as we call upon your name, I ask you to move in response to our prayer. Lord, let us pray until something happens tonight, Lord, and let us get out of the way and let you work as you see fit. Lord, we glorify you for what you're going to do, and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody that loved him said amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, teach us how to pray, and you can be seated. Hallelujah. It doesn't take very long in your reading of God's word to find out 
that the God of the Bible is constantly reaching for and searching after man. He's seeking man out. When Adam sinned in the garden, the Bible says that the Lord God called unto Adam and he said unto him, Where art thou? The Bible says that when Moses was in the wilderness, he saw a burning bush that was not consumed. It was not burned up. And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. God called him by name, seeking him out. The Old Testament reveals that God personally called men like Gideon. The Lord said to him, Thou mighty man of valor. The Lord personally called a man like Jeremiah that we've read from his book tonight. And he said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. The Lord called many others in the Old Testament personally to serve him and to walk before him. There are many ways I find in Scripture that God reaches out to and communicates with man. Primarily, God speaks to man through his word. We don't just call the Bible the Word of God because we need another name for it. We don't just call the Bible the Word of God because we ran out of things to call it. God speaks to man and He reveals Himself to man through His inspired Word. You'll remember in Isaiah 55 how the Bible said, As the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it to, to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it God speaks to man through his word Paul said to his son in the faith Timothy continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith Faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul said to him that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God communicates with man through his word. Psalm 19 reveals that God communicates with man through the sky. It says the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he set a tabernacle for the sun and the earth is warned by it. God speaks to man through the sky. When David penned these words down in Psalm 9, he was saying that everything in the sky pointed him to the fact that there is a powerful and a wonderful creator. David said the sky pointed him to the fact that God was glorious and that he was mighty. One man said that David could see it in the blue sky with the glory of the sun and clouds and the beauty of the sunrises and sunsets. He could see it in the night sky with the brightness of the moon the awe of the starry sky and the cloud spread of the distant galaxies. These together with their size, their awe, their grandeur shouted to David and all who would see the God who created all this is glorious and this is the evidence of his glory. He is glorious in his size having created something so big as the universe. He is glorious in his engineering having created something that works together so well. He's glorious in his artistry having created something so beautiful. He's glorious in his goodness and kindness having created something for all of humanity to see. Another man said though all preachers on the earth should grow silent and every human mouth should cease from publishing the glory of God. The heavens above will never cease to declare and proclaim his majesty and glory 
glory. They are forever preaching like an unbroken chain. Their message is delivered from day to day and from night to night. God speaks to us and reveals himself through the sky. Paul said, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The sky tells us that God is communicating with man. How many knows that God communicates with man through his son? God wrote a message of love to all of humanity when he sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but should have everlasting life. The writer of Hebrews said, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. God has communicated with the world through his son and he continues to do so. You'll remember how Saul at the time was on the road to Damascus. He was going to find Christians that he could bring back to have them arrested and killed for their faith in Christ. But it was on that road to Damascus that the son spoke directly to Saul and said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And Saul said, Lord, what will you have me to do? God was communicating with man through and by his son. You hear testimonies even today it was back in November I heard a testimony of those in the midst of the war in Gaza how that Jesus was coming in dreams and revealing himself to Muslims and they were being born again God still communicates with man through his son God communicates with man through his spirit we know that Jesus said the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Spirit of God convicts the sinner of his sin, communicating with man. The Spirit of God anoints men and women to stand behind the pulpit and to preach the Word of God. When God speaks to your heart, you know people will say that. I felt the Lord speak to me. When God speaks to your heart, I believe that He does so by His Spirit. And I want to tell you tonight that many churches sell themselves short. Many Christians sell themselves short when it comes to the gifts and the manifestations of the Spirit. But God communicates with man through those as well. He speaks to man through the word of wisdom, through the word of knowledge, through tongues and interpretation, through prophecy. These are all ways that God communicates with man through his spirit. But the real question is tonight, if we understand God communicates with us in so many different ways, how do we communicate with God? I know that's simple, but how do we talk back if God is speaking to us through his word? If God is speaking to us through the sky, if God is speaking to us through his son Jesus, if God is speaking through and by his Holy Spirit, then how do we talk back? The answer is prayer. Prayer is the way that man communicates back to God. It is the means of communication between man and God. It is the way that man reaches out to God by calling on his name in prayer. Ray Hughes said that prayer is the breath of the Christian experience and one is lifeless without it. Prayer is the cost in Pentecost. Without prayer, there is no power. Prayer is your life source as a child of God. It is your way to get in touch with the Heavenly Father and we need to pray. We need to pray now more than ever before. There's just a few things about prayer that I want to show to you tonight. A few uh, unchanging truths, if you will, about prayer. The first thing we've got to understand tonight is that prayer is a requirement. We are required to pray. When Samuel was speaking to the nation of Israel, he said, Moreover, as for me, God forbid 
that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray. But I will teach you the good and the right way. For Samuel, him stopping praying on behalf of Israel was a sin. And I believe the same is true for you and me tonight. Now I know that we don't like being told something we're doing is sin. I know we don't like being told that if we're not praying we're in sin but the Bible says in James therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. If you know the right way to walk if you know the right way to conduct yourself if you know that it's expected of you to pray and you neglect to pray then you're falling into sin. It was not a preacher. It was Jesus who said that men ought always to pray and and not to faint. He taught his disciples that. Paul said rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing in prayer. He said continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. After you've equipped yourself. With the whole armor of God. After you've got every piece. Just right in place. Paul said praying always. With all prayer and supplication. In the spirit. And watching thereunto. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We are required as children of God to call on the name of the Lord and to pray. I read about a gifted pianist. She was talented. She played before vast crowds of people. And she said, if I fail to practice one day, I can tell. She said, if I fail two days, my family can tell. But if I don't practice three days, my audience can tell. I believe the same exact thing applies to prayer. I'm not trying to scare you into praying because somebody might find you out. I'm not here tonight to try to force you to pray because you're scared. Somebody's going to see something wrong in your life and say, well, they must just not be praying like they ought to. I'm not doing that here tonight. But what I am saying is that when you pray, you get in tune with the mind of God. When you pray, you're led by the Spirit of God. You're sensitive to God's Holy Spirit. You're able to detect and to hear the voice of God but if you stop praying on the other side of that coin if you cease from praying get away from the prayer closet it won't be very long before that sensitivity is dull it won't be long before you notice a difference and if you start noticing a difference it won't be long before somebody else does prayer is absolutely a requirement but here's what I want us to know we should not view that as a negative thing. It's not something to check off of your daily list. See, we're creatures of habit. We like to get into a routine. But if you view it as just something you have to check off, you'll never enjoy that time of prayer. You'll never get anything out of that time of prayer if you're just viewing it as a daily checkpoint. It's something that I do, something that I do to get on and to move on with my day. You'll never enjoy prayer. You'll never be effective in your prayer. What you've got to understand is that prayer is is a privilege. It's an honor. It's an opportunity that we've been given to approach the holy God of heaven. It is an opportunity and a wonderful privilege that we've been given to call on the name of the Lord and to know that when we seek an audience with him that he will hear us. You can call the governor of the state of Florida tomorrow but he'll not be able to see you tomorrow. You can call the president of the United States States, whether you want to see him or not you can call him and request an audience with him tomorrow and he won't be able to see you but if you call on the God of heaven tonight not even waiting until tomorrow but tonight if you call on the God who created all of heaven and earth the God who formed you in his own image if you call on him you don't have to wait until tomorrow but his presence will come tonight and touch your heart and touch your life 
life. In fact, we're called on to pray without ceasing. And if we pray without ceasing, we'll walk in the presence of God. We'll walk in the glory of God and we'll be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'm glad that when I pray, the Lord moves on my behalf. Take the time to pray because it is your privilege as a believer. We're told to pray without ceasing. And we may wonder why did Paul tell us that? It's because we all have a tendency to lean on the flesh. We all have a tendency to depend on self. One man said prayer is not so much an act as it is an attitude. It's an attitude of dependency. Dependency upon God. And since we have that tendency to lean on the flesh, Jesus said, watch and pray. Jesus saw his disciples there sleeping while he had been in agonizing prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said to them, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak, so we must keep our eyes open. We must keep our spiritual antennas tuned. We must be in a spirit and an attitude of prayer. And because we know tonight that prayer is a requirement, we need to know how to pray. Multitudes in the world today, and the sad truth is many in the church have no idea how to pray. They have no idea how to spend that time with God. I read in the Gospels that Jesus' disciples had seen him perform many, many powerful miracles. They had seen Jesus open blinded eyes. They had seen him as he caused the lame to walk. But I believe the main thing that those disciples noticed was his prayer life. I believe the main thing that they paid attention to was his prayer life because time and time again, Jesus would separate himself. He would leave the multitude. He would leave the vast crowds that thronged him just to have a time of prayer with his heavenly father. He would get along with God. He would be away from the thronging masses to spend those moments with God in prayer. And I believe that the teachings and the miracles of Jesus were not the main focuses of his day. It was Brother Gobble. Many of you know him. It was him who said, I heard him one, take, one time he was preaching. He said to him, to Jesus, that the times of miracles, the times of teaching, they were only the in-between parts of his prayer times. Those are just the things, the healing of, of many, the feeding of the 5,000. Those things were just what fell between Jesus' times of prayer with the Father. The disciples watched the prayer life of Jesus. They watched him as he performed miracles. They watched him as he did all of those things. But when it came down to it, they didn't ask him, Lord, teach us how to perform miracles. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him open blinded eyes, but they didn't ask him, Lord, teach us how to raise the dead and open blinded eyes. They saw Jesus' prayer life and said, Lord, teach us to pray. He responded to them, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive Give us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. On another occasion in the Sermon on the Mount, he added, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. So by what we're shown in the word of God, how should we pray? When you pray, pray in Pray in faith, believing. 
If you don't believe that God is going to hear you when you pray, there is no sense in you praying at all. There's no reason for you to pray at all. Faith, it must fuel your prayer life. If I knew that my prayers were going nowhere, if I knew that when I prayed they weren't going to make it past the ceiling, I would find something else to do with my time. I would find something else to do in the day other than pray. But since I have faith that he will hear me when I pray since I know that there's a God whose ear is open to my cry I will pray in faith believing Jesus said have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith therefore for I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Jesus told the father of a demon possessed boy, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Paul said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. When you pray, Pray, friend, believe that God will answer you. Believe that whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's five years from now, that God will send the answer. Believe that the answer is going to come when you pray. When you pray, pray in secret. There are times when your family ought to get together and pray. There are times when we join together as the body of Christ and we're going to pray. Concert prayer, praying at the same time is a key element of a Pentecostal worship service. But that does not change the fact that there's something about getting alone with God. Jesus said when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen to men but Jesus said I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly when you pray pray in secret when you pray, pray in Jesus' name. Now I want to tell you something about praying in Jesus' name. That's not just telling God what you want and tagging Jesus' name on the end of it. Amen? That's not just saying whatever you want to say. And then putting Jesus on the end of it as some kind of stamp to seal it, to send it to God. All right? Praying in Jesus' name is a prayer that has an awareness of his power, his compassion, his desire to respond to our needs and requests. It's realizing that when we pray in his name, when we pray acknowledging and recognizing him, that is praying in the name of Jesus, praying as if he's standing right beside of you, not just asking for silly stuff and expecting him to give it because you used a certain formula. It's praying and asking him to move according to his will. Jesus said whatsoever he shall ask in my name that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son if you shall ask anything in my name I will do it when you pray pray according to the will of God because his will is never wrong he said thy will be done when he was in that garden of Gethsemane having that agonizing time of prayer realizing what was just about to come realizing that he was just about to give his life to pay man's sin debt he wanted to push the cup away he said Lord if you will I'd love for you to take this cup from me but at the end of that he said nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt let your will be done John said this is the confidence that 
that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him when we pray according to his will God will answer and when you pray don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and him that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened unto him. But that implies in the original language, and ask, and keep on asking. A seek and keep on seeking. A knock and keep on knocking until the door opens. There was somebody who said, if you have to ask more than once, you're not showing any faith. Brother Clendenin said, if you don't ask more than once, you have no faith. If you don't ask more than once, you're not exhibiting faith at all. You ought to pray without ceasing. Prayer is a requirement. We must pray. We must call on the name of the Lord, especially when we view the climate of our world tonight, how bad that things have become. We must pray. But prayer is also a refreshing. It's not a dragging thing to pray. You may not always pray on fire, receiving from heaven in the first five minutes, but if you'll stick at it a little while, if you'll keep on praying a little while, it won't be long before the refreshing comes. To meet with God, it brings that refreshing to your soul. And we meet with him in the, in the place of prayer. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I believe that promise is just as much to the saint of God as it is to the sinner. Go to him in prayer. Cast your cares. Take your burdens to the Lord prayer connects you with God and he alone brings that refreshing to your soul that old song says oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything Every single thing to God in prayer. There's another song in that red back hymnal that says take it to the Lord in prayer. Bring it to him. Present it to him because he will bring refreshing and he will send the answer. But here's where another dimension of prayer comes in. There is another way to pray that brings refreshing to your soul. When you find yourself in the place where you don't know what to pray, where you don't know how to pray, when you don't know what to say, when your own English seems to fail you. The Apostle Paul says that we can pray in the Spirit. If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, he says, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, the Spirit himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Paul said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto men, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself Paul saw the value of when you don't know how to pray praying with other tongues praying in the spirit and what I'm talking about right here it's not a man getting up in a pulpit and saying alright everybody speak in tongues now that's not what I'm talking about but what I am saying is when you come to the end of yourself when you come to the end of your own knowledge you just step out on faith walk with the Lord and begin to pray with the spirit Paul asked the question for if I pray in an unknown tongue my spirit prayeth 
strength, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Jude declared, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you don't know what to pray, when you don't know how to pray, let the Holy Ghost begin to pray through you. Your mind won't get involved then. Your own will won't get involved then because you're only praying according to God's will when you pray with the Spirit. And when you pray with the Spirit, your soul will be revived, your spirit will be refreshed, and God will move on your behalf. I'm going to say it with Paul tonight. I will pray with the Spirit. I will unashamedly pray with the Holy Ghost. I will pray and let the Spirit of God pray through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a missionary. I've told this story before, but there was a missionary that I heard about not long ago who had gone to Japan during the World War II as a, as a Methodist missionary he was there working there doing the best he could for God and at that time in Japan after Pearl Harbor they went and found anybody who was a part of the Allied forces anybody from America anybody from Europe that was a part of the Allied forces they took them and they arrested them this man was taken along with them taken into custody and they would bring him, because he was a preacher, beyond the normal prison, and they put him into military prison, put him in a terrible place where he would be beaten. He would be torn to shreds by those Japanese. They would take him every few days and bring him into another chamber, take him out of his cell, bring him to another chamber, hang him up by his arms, all the way up until he would be lifted off the ground and just as his shoulders were about to go out of socket, they would take a bamboo rod and beat him. They would beat him over and over. And if you know about bamboo, as it breaks, it becomes razor sharp. That's what this man was experiencing. Just as he was about to pass out from the pressure of being hung up and his shoulders going out of socket, they would beat him with this bamboo rod. And after that, they would take him down take him back to his cell and give him a few days for healing to begin and they do it all over again. Right as those wounds, those open places would begin to heal and to scab over, they would do it again. This process continued for a while where the man asked the Lord, Lord, I'm tired of this. I can't handle any more of this. Would you please just take me on to be with you? I know you. I have a relationship with you. I've served you all of these years. Take me on to heaven to be with you. For whatever reason, God would not answer that prayer. Death evaded him. No matter how many times he was hung up there, he prayed to die and God would not let him die. So one day he realized this. He was not going to die. The Lord was going to allow him to live. So while they were beating him one day, he said, Lord, if you're not going to take me, you're going to have to give me something to bring me through this. You're going to have to give me something to help me with this problem I'm facing. He said, in that very moment, he said, it felt like hot oil went down my back. He said, I felt like a shock of electricity went through me. And the only thing I can compare it with is being in a cocoon. He said, I knew they were beating me. I knew they were hitting me. But I just couldn't feel it. And when I came to myself, I was speaking in another language. A Methodist missionary filled with the Holy Ghost right there as the Japanese were beating his back. He went back to his room, his cell, and he began to think on these things and said, the only thing I can come up with is that I've had an Acts chapter 2 experience. And his own mind began to work against him then. I've been taught this isn't for today. I've been told this isn't for us. And he said, that voice spoke to him and said, who are you going to believe? Amen. 
It wasn't but a few days later he began to heal that they took him back to that other chamber where they would beat him. They started up and he began to pray with the Spirit. Praying with the Spirit. And they stopped the beating right there. There was a Japanese officer standing outside the door that heard him, perked up and turned over to him and said, What are you doing? I've never heard that language before. He could speak English as well. He said, What are you saying? I've never heard that in my life. And for whatever reason, because of the, the, the bustle and the hustle this has caused, he said, Just take him back to the chain. Take him back to his cell. A few days later, they brought him back to beat him again. They hung him up and they were just about to strip him of his clothes. And the Lord spoke to him and said, You don't have to wait for them to beat you for you to pray with the Spirit. He started praying with the Spirit. They looked at him like he had two heads. Took him back to the cell. The next time, the Lord did get it through to him. You don't have to wait for them to strip your clothes for you to pray with the Spirit. He began to pray. They took him back to the cell. A few days later, they came and got him. He's walking down the hall, and the Lord spoke to him and said, You don't have to wait till you get to that other chamber to pray with the Spirit. He began to pray in tongues right there in the hallway, and they dropped him. They left him alone, and until 1945, when he was released, they never beat him again. I'm just telling you tonight, church, there's power when you pray with the Spirit, when you pray according to the will of Almighty God. I'm coming down to a close finally. I want us to understand tonight that prayer brings results. It always brings results. And I don't believe there's any book in the New Testament of your Bible that bears that fact out any better than the book of Acts. The book of Acts says in chapter 1 that these all continued with prayer. They continued in supplication in one accord with the women, Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in response to that prayer, Acts chapter 2 came. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. They were filled with the Spirit in response to their prayer. In Acts chapter 3, that lame man sitting out by the gate called Beautiful. Simon Peter came to him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. And he went to praying, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Lord moved in response to prayer, and the man was healed. In Acts chapter 4, the miracle and the message it caused trouble for the apostles. They knew they would need boldness to face the days ahead. So the church got together and they began to pray. They said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod, Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done and they said now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus and the Bible says that when they had prayed when they had prayed,
prayed. The place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. They prayed and God moved. They prayed and God sent a result. In Acts 7, the last words uttered by Stephen before he was stoned to death was a prayer. He said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. The New Testament church was a church of prayer. In Acts 12, James had been killed. Simon Peter had been arrested and was waiting to be killed. Things were looking bad. He was locked up. There were four quaternions, 16 soldiers that were on duty guarding Simon Peter. But Acts 12 and 5 says that even though he was kept in prison, prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And the night before, he was scheduled to be killed the night before he was going to lose his life that church was praying and the angel of the Lord said gird up yourself get up off the ground shake the bands loose put your coat on your back it's time to get out of here so much so that the angel brought him out of the prison brought him out of that place and took him right to the door of where the church was praying and when he came there they didn't even believe he was there they didn't even believe the miracle that God had performed. What are you saying, preacher? I'm just saying that God moves when we pray. He will send an answer when we pray. Something happens when we pray, so we ought to pray until something happens. It was the prayer of Moses that spared Israel. It was the prayer of Samson that renewed his strength one last time. It was the prayer of Elijah that brought down fire and rain from heaven. It was the prayer of Elisha that brought a dead boy back to life again. It was the prayer of Daniel that closed the mouth of the lions. It was the prayer of Simon Peter that made the lame man to walk again. It was the prayer of Paul that healed the sick. And I want to let you in on something tonight before I shut this thing down. If you're saved tonight, it's because somebody prayed if you've been spared from the judgment of God it's because somebody prayed if the Lord has ever healed your body it's because somebody prayed if you're filled with the Holy Ghost tonight it's because somebody prayed if you've been delivered from the curse of sin from the curse of law from the bondage that the devil has it's because somebody has prayed on your behalf if you've been set free like the captive out of prison it's because somebody called on the name of the Lord in prayer and if prayer can do all that I believe we ought to get together we ought to bind together as the body of Christ and pray until something happens pray until God moves pray until the glory comes down and heaven fills our souls Lord teach us how to pray Lord teach us how to pray Lord teach us how to pray and when we pray the sick will be healed when we pray the deaf and ears will be unstopped when we pray the blinded eyes will open when we pray the dead will be raised back to life again raise your hands up and praise him tonight if you believe the word of God Hallelujah. Lord, teach us how to pray. 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 God, touch us tonight. Hallelujah. I want everybody to stand all over the building. All over the building. We're going to join together and believe that God will stay true to his word. We're going to join together and believe that God will be true to his word. I want you quickly to come and stand around this altar. Move fast. I want you to move right now. Let's come and stand together around this altar tonight. Hallelujah. How many believe in the power of prayer? How many believe in the power of prayer? Glory to God. We're going to join together and pray, church. We're going to pray one for another that we may be healed. 
because we do believe the word of God that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I don't know what you need from God tonight. I don't know who your lost loved ones are but he knows and we're going to join together and pray that the Lord would move in this week of revival. We're going to join together and pray that prodigals will come on back into the fold. We're going to join together and pray that the sick will be healed when we place our faith in him. How many are willing to pray? How many are willing to pray right now all over this building? Lift up your voice and begin to talk to God. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Come on, church, let's pray. Come on, church, let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Call that prodigal's name out right now. Call them by name. Ask the Lord to bring them home. Yeah. Call that prodigal's name out. Let's believe God together. Let's believe God together. You present that sickness to the Lord. Call it by name. Say, Lord, I need you to heal me. Lord, I need you to heal me. We serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is able. Whatever it is, whatever the problem, God is able. Let's pray and believe Him tonight. Present that need to Him. Present that need to Him. If you're watching online and need the touch of heaven, He's willing to move on your behalf. He's willing to move on your behalf. Hallelujah. Present your cause to the Lord. Present your case to Him. He's willing to hear you. He's willing to respond to your prayer. How many have a physical need tonight? Your need is physical. You need the Lord to touch your body in some way or the other. Would you raise that hand and raise it high? You need the Lord to touch your body. There's people all over this building that need the touch of heaven in their physical bodies. If you, if you don't have your hand raised up, I want you to find somebody you can pray with. We're going to put the scripture into practice tonight. We're going to pray one for the other. We're going to pray one for another. If you have a physical need, raise your hand. We want to pray for you. 
I want you to help these pray around here. We're going to join together in faith. We're going to join together in faith believing tonight that God is able. We're going to join together in faith believing that God is able. Let's pray, church. Hallelujah. raise our hands and thank him let's raise our hands and thank him that he hears us when we pray God we believe for it the impossible we'll see a miracle God we believe God we believe for it glory hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
We're going to pray once again for this revival this week. I need strength in my body. We're a little worn out from the travel that we've done the last few days. But we're trusting the Lord. But here's how we're going to pray. I want us to pray that the Lord would give me everything I need to bring to this pulpit. I want us to pray that you would be ready to receive what the Lord has for you. But we're going to do that in a few specific ways. One day I was reading in a book at home. And I found an order for revival. It's one preacher that looked through this and found it and put it down. There's an order for revival found in God's Word. Three prayers that we can pray together. David said, first of all, in Psalm 138 and verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Revival must begin with me. And I'm not talking about the preacher. I'm looking away from the preacher. I'm standing with you saying that. Revival must begin with me as an individual must begin with you as individuals. And as we pray that, Lord, revive me. After you get through reviving me, Lord, the psalmist said in Psalm 85 and 6, wilt thou not revive us? Right? Lord, after you've revived me, look to that one to the right or to the left of me and revive them too. Amen? Look around the church, this building that we're in, the people that are here. Revive us. And then, when I'm revived and we're revived, then we pray with the prophet Habakkuk when he said, Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. There's a lot of different ways we can apply that. But Lord, revive thy work. Let sinners be saved again since we've been revived. Let sick bodies be healed again since we've been revived. Let believers be filled with the Holy Ghost since we've been revived. Let demons be cast out since we have been revived. Since I've been revived, since we've been revived, Lord, do a work in this town. Do a work in this county. Do a work in this church since we've been revived. Can we pray like that for just a few minutes? If you want to stand, if you want to kneel, whatever you want to do, we're going to start praying, Lord, revive me. Can we do that? Let's pray that right now. Lord. We come before you tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to revive me as an individual, as a person that's a part of the body of Christ. I'm asking you first to help me to look on the inside. Lord, search my heart. Try my ways and see if there be any way in me that's wicked. Cleanse me and lead me in the way everlasting. Forgive me of sin. Forgive me of my shortcomings. Oh, God, let us search our hearts, oh, God. Let your Spirit search our hearts so that we individually may be revived. Oh, God, Lord, revive me. Help me to call on your name. Help me to dig into your word this week. Help me to spend time in prayer this week. Lord, I want you to revive everybody else, but, Lord, revive me, I pray. Lord, let revival begin with me, I pray. Let revival begin in my heart like it did with Hezekiah. Let revival begin in my heart, I pray. Let revival begin in me, Lord. Revive me, Lord, even though we walk in the midst of trouble. You will revive me, Lord. We believe you for it. We believe you for it. Lord, revive me. Now let's pray, church. Revive us. I want you to lay your hand on the one to the right or to the left of you. Ask God to revive them. Do it right now. Ask the Lord to revive that one next to you. Ask the Lord to send revival that one next to you. Pray, church, one for another. Ask the Lord to send revival to each heart and each life. Let your fire fall down on me, rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift to 
my hands toward heaven. Let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, all I want to do oh, is hallelujah. you. Lord, all revive I us. To revive us, we pray. All Let I your church be revived. Let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle all the fire within me, Lord. Once again, oh, all Lord, I revive want to us. do is love you. All I want to do is worship. All I want to do is lay here right, right at, at your feet. feet. As I lift to my head. Let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. One, One more prayer. Again. We're going to pray now that the Lord would revive his work, that souls would be saved this week, that lives would be absolutely transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray that sick bodies would be healed this week. Something that cannot be done by mere emotion. Something that cannot be done by our own minds or by convincing somebody of something. Something that must be a miracle of God. Let's pray for that. Let's pray for believers to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's pray for the devil to be run out of somebody. For somebody to be set free. Let's ask the Lord to do it. Can we do that? Let's pray and ask God to move in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to revive your work. We ask you to revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revive your work, we pray.
lifting up the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. He made the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk. Oh, he called the blind to see. about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name Jesus. Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name Jesus. There's peace in the name Jesus. He made the lame to walk. The dumb to talk, oh, he calls the blind to see. I don't know about you, but he made a way for me when I was down and out, deep in despair. My Savior came and he found me there, he brought me out. Oh, he brought me out. Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. He made the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk. He calls the blind to see. I don't know about you, but he made a way for me. When I was down and out, deep in despair, my Savior came. He found me there. He brought me out. Oh, he brought me out. Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name, Jesus. Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name, Jesus. Jesus, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have been we have been challenged today in both services, one going hand in hand with the other, to be consumed, to be zealous for God and the things of God. <laughs> and uh the Lord challenging me and in, in uh, thinking about um, the time that I spend with Him each morning and expanding on that. And the first thought that comes to my mind was the busyness of my day and how I, the timing of different things that have to happen in the morning to get going and all that kind of thing. And. Uh, and so I'm, I'm thinking about the time that I normally get up. And uh, the Lord says, well, you could get up earlier. <laughs> you could get up earlier than what you do. I said, Lord, it's already awful early when I get up. <laughs> and, uh, but it's amazing what we would, we would gladly get up early to do other things. And uh, so I challenge you. 
to examine the time. I know how it is. And uh, early in the morning, that bed feels awfully comfortable and just. But I challenge you to let's let's get zealous for. Um, if if we don't really, if we don't pray, things aren't going to happen like we like. I know we want them to. And the lives will be touched. We we won't be what we need to be without it. So I challenge you in the same way. Seek the Lord. And um, I challenge you also, be here this week. <clears throat> I know what uh, working people feel like. I know what tired bodies feel like. Uh, but make sure you come. Let's make a special effort all this week to be here every night. And uh, if you didn't see someone that should have been here today, uh, help help pastor call them up and say, hey, we missed you today. I uh, hope you're going to be able to be with us in, in, uh, in revival. And uh, we'll have visitors from different churches and things like that. And I hope they're blessed. I hope they just, their church benefits from this revival as well. But I'm more concerned about Akoe, Church of God. And uh, so let's get in here, dig in, get up in the morning, spend some time in prayer. If you can come each night before church, spend some time in prayer doing that as well. And uh, let's just get in let God have his way. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Let's, let's uh, be dismissed in prayer together. I pray that you have a good day tomorrow, that you're going to rest so well tonight. You're going to get up tomorrow morning feeling, feeling ready to go to face the week. Lord, thank you for this ministry. Uh, Brother Adam, Sister Kaylee, Lord, the, the team that you have put together and, and the lives that they're living, the ministry that you are moving through them and what you're doing. Pray, God, that you would give them rest in their bodies tonight. And, Lord, that they would get up tomorrow uh, renewed in their hearts, their minds, and physically touched. Uh, Lord, just help them, Lord, tonight. Touch us all. And those who are, have a work day tomorrow, pray, God, that they would be uh, have a good day. and uh, But also be, be refreshed and have the determination to be back in the house of the Lord tomorrow. Lord, I know that you're going to bless them for every every sacrifice that's made and those who are unable to be with us today for different reasons those who are sick i pray that you would touch them touch their bodies those who are out of town lord i pray that you'd give them traveling mercies they'll come back and be back home again and i pray that you just go with us now give us a good night's rest and bring us back at the appointed time tomorrow we're going to be careful to give you all the praise the glory and the honor for we ask it all in jesus name amen Amen. God bless you is my prayer. Shake hands. Be friendly. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Have a great day tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow night.